Hey guys, Zalonius here. Welcome to another video on the channel, a very important one. And it is my first video on the actual game. So EAFC 24, FC 24 launch today. And the first thing you should do when you load up the game is check your settings. So we've got some new menus on FC 24 compared to the old FIFA franchise. You can see all the different modes there. You literally, to go to the settings, just go top left, click the wheel, and we're there. One thing I would check, so obviously you go to settings. One thing I would check is go to your customized controls. If you play alternate, make sure you just quickly check that. I play classic, but some people don't, I know. Majority of them, though, are in the game settings, as you'd expect. Keep competitive on if you are going to play online. I'm assuming if you are watching this video, you are probably going to be playing online. Competitive will be in all online competitive matches. I think that includes squad battles. So you can see there, the following settings are affected. So, auto shots, assist headers, auto flare pass, things like that. So you may as well have it on if you're going to play online, because why would you get used to different gameplay? Shot assistance, I am going to use assisted for now. Like This is my first time loading up the game. I've not played a match yet. I will talk about um, the gameplay, what I think, once I've got a bit more used to it. I've been doing tactics videos showing my gameplay. There is a new one called Precision. I am going to try that out at some point. <clears throat> the thing is, we used to have assisted semi and manual. Precision might literally just be semi, to be honest, but I'm going to get used to the game using assisted, and then I'll try Precision out and let you guys know what I think. I might come back in a few weeks and update this video. Normally, though, the settings are pretty obvious for to use for the year. Time finishing, I use it. I don't know if it's really good this year or not. Last year, it was definitely worth using if you was good at it. If you're not good at it and you don't want to practice it, I would personally leave it off. Auto flare pass is left off anyway with the competitive stage. Through pass assisted semi or manual. I would have it on semi. Honestly, it's a bit sad, but the more assisted you can have this game, the better, generally speaking. Uh, manual's very hard. Lob through pass. Um, so that's the chip through balls. Again, I would have that on semi. Ground pass assistance definitely would have that um, assisted, in my opinion. Cross. Cross is one that sometimes you can change. So cross direction and power will be assisted. This helps the player cross more effectively into the receiver's path when you um, aim into the box. This one's semi. The effects of the cross will depend more on where you aim and how long you hold square. That's sometimes worth trying, but I'm going to go with assisted and I will test the other one out. Lob. Generally speaking, I always stick with that. Pass, receiver lock. I definitely think you should be using late. Unless you are on really bad gameplay, I would use late. Because late allows you to react to what's going on more. Animation start and power up. Animation start, I think it's a new one, but I, I only use late, late for that. Precision pass sensitivity. So that's a new thing this year. I think it's using R1. I think when you press R1, you do um, a triangle, you do through balls. Um, adjust the speed of precision aim. At high sensitivity, the aim will always match your angle input, making it more responsive, yet more challenging to aim precisely. So high or normal. I'll test it on normal to get used to it, and if I think that I can do it faster and more effectively, I'll try high. Again, I'll let you guys know. I always have my assistance for clearance on directional. I want clearances to go where I'm aiming. Why would you not? Advanced defending. Tactical defending allows you... So this is a bit different. Tactical Defender allows you to take time your tackles and maintain your position. It will contextually choose, depending on the player's position, between a stand tackle and a more physical tackle when the circle button is pressed. Advanced Defender gives you freedom to choose your tackle type. Press circle to attempt to stand tackle. Press X to attempt to shoulder challenge or seal out. So the only issue really here would be if you are using um, different buttons and custom mapping your controller, then I'm not sure it would work. I'm going to try... Um, advanced defending and try to get used to standing tackles and the attempt to shoulder charge or seal out pass block assistance I don't know why you wouldn't have it on you want your AI to be trying to intercept more I always have on air balls and loose balls simply put on crosses you can't switch effectively if there's men in the box and on loose balls it helps you do it quicker I always have none on auto switch and move assistance I want when I switch to react to what I'm doing if you have really bad gameplay and delay you might want to go to low but I, I have it on non. Right stick section, classic, player rotation, or adaptive. Adaptive last year was new, but it was broken. It literally just did not work. So I would avoid that unless you want to test it out and see if it's better this year. But even then, it felt weird. I like classic, think that works better. Player or ball, I've always used player. 
Um, ball relative was added a few years ago. Some people prefer it, but I tried both. I prefer player relative. Right stick switching sensitivity. I'm pretty sure this is a new one this year. Um, I'm going to stick with um, what you call it, what it is on normal. And if I have an issue with my switching, I'll mess about with it. Next player switching. I feel like there's quite a few new ones this year. Classic or closest to ball or goal side. That is definitely new. So goal side, the setting favours players on the goal side of the ball. It's interesting. Makes sense. I guess you might use that in terms of to switch someone who can affect the play more. Classic. The best player will determined by various factors. Normally, classic's just whoever's the closest player to you. I That would what I'd do. Player lock. I like to use player lock, so I'll leave it on. It doesn't really happen by accident, so I don't think there's an issue with that. Uh, well, wild defending press R to trigger icon switching. I don't like icon switching. I don't think it's good. It's distraction. So I have that off. Contextual dribbling you can't use. All but dribbling allows the player to move and pivot around the ball without touching it. To do this, hold L1 and L2 and move the left. That's new this year. I'm going to try it, see if it seems any good. Might allow you to change angles a bit. I'll see what it's like. I don't think you can actually do that too much, though. Um, save assistance. Doesn't really matter. It only matters if you're playing pro clubs and you're a keeper. Analog sprint allows you to control a faster sprint. I have this off. Simply put, if I'm sprinting, I want to run as fast as I can. The trigger effect will cause a small resistance before fully pressing. I, I don't want that to happen. Uh, I don't want any uh, vibration feedback on the controller. I don't really get why you'd want that on FIFA. I don't think it makes the game more immersive, personally. Uh, all the match stuff here. I don't think it matters unless you're playing against the AI. Uh, no, it's just against the AI. Uh, camera setting, important. Tactical, I feel like this is a new one. I, every year, try the new ones out and never like them. I always end up going back to telebroadcast. I personally have always just used telebroadcast default. I would say try different cameras out if you're not happy. Or, generally speaking, the two best ones tend to be telebroadcast or co-op. Try it. If you want a more zoomed out where you can see more stuff, I would try telebroadcast, not co-op, sorry. But telebroadcast for me is the best of both worlds. And if you're not fully happy, I would honestly try mess around with the settings. Uh, adjust the delay of the in-game camera and follow the ball. Not seen that one before. I'll leave it how it is for now, and then we'll see if I want to change it all. Power shot zoom. I like the power shot. Zoom it in a bit. Other people don't like it. Turn that off if you don't want that. It could be distracting. Visual. I always have player name and indicator. That allows you to see the bar, the stamina, um, and when you have player name on, you are able to see the actual player name above your head. If you don't do this, you end up seeing someone's username. I would rather see the player name they've got. Why would you not? Why would you want to see the username when they're on their icon? You want to see who they're controlling. It's quicker and easier than looking down at the bar. Especially this year, that we're probably going to get more random players with the evolution. Obviously, people are going to be being sweaty and just going for the better ones. I'm going to try use some different ones. I will do videos where I recommend the best evolutions. The icon, I have it on large. I don't think you want it on small, but you can mess around with that. Choose whether or not you want the player to indicate to fade due to stamina loss. Not that bored. The play styles plus, I want that over players' head so I can see. I want to see when the play styles are actually working. I don't think it's too, um, what you call it, uh, much of a distraction. Next player switch indicator. Definitely want that on. You want to see who you're going to switch to next. Uh, player based difficulty indicator. Never heard of that. That doesn't really make sense. It seems again more like something against the AI. Uh, score clock drop down. That's like random facts in game. I don't like that. That just can clog up the pitch precision pass visuals enables or disables precision pass visuals i will definitely have this on while i'm getting used to it and seeing how it works precision shot so that's if you're using the precision shot i'm not at the moment but we'll see how it gets on i never mess with the radar uh, if you want to mess with that type of stuff there you can if you want to see your input overlay and connection you can do that hyper motion choose whether you want hyper motion insight augmented reality overlays to appear during breaks gameplay Sure, I'll give it a try. Why not? Um, rules, again, only matters when you're playing offline. Audio. I put all my audio down to zero. I really don't care about having any audio, personally. Some people really like it. For me, no, I'm okay, thanks. And this is just stuff that is literally for against the computer. 
there you go. I would recommend checking out um, the controls a bit more in depth. I'm not going to do that here, but have a look. There's a few new buttons this year. Maybe check the new skill moves if you're a skiller, the celebrations. But there you go. That is the settings. Make sure you go through them. I think mine are pretty solid ones to just copy, but you might want to experiment and see if some work better for you. Appreciate you guys and the support. I'm excited for this year ahead. I am going to be streaming later tonight on Twitch. Do get involved. Appreciate you guys. Let's hope for a great year. Peace.